How's it going everyone and welcome to a brand new video. Uh, today I'm doing a brand new uh, update in the One Football series. What do you think of the new face cam box by the way? Do you like it? I think it's pretty dope. It's like World Cup themed, it's pretty cool. Anyway, Welcome back to a brand new video. Today I have teamed up with a company called One Football. Me and seven other YouTubers have done exactly the same thing to bring you guys a World Cup guide and a complete guide to every group in the World Cup before the World Cup starts. You guys can get updates on different teams and what teams you guys like, what teams you don't like, what teams are going to do well, what teams aren't, players, all that good stuff. You guys can get that through the OneFootball app. Now, if you look over to that side of the screen, you see that the team name is Senegal. I am using a full Senegalese team in the DKT today. I've actually already done it and I'm going to be post commenting it and giving you guys a little commentary on what I think of the team, different parts of the team and that sort of stuff. However, if you want updates on Senegal's real football team in the World Cup, like their national team, the best way to do it is through the One Football app. One Football allows you to favorite different teams and groups and allow you to get updates straight to your phone and push notifications on everything that happens in the World Cup. Their app is absolutely fantastic and it helps you keep up to date with absolutely everything going on in the World Cup. It's really easy. All you have to do is press the little star button in the top right of the corner of the screen when you're on a different team or a group and you get push notifications for that team. I am covering Group H in this series with the seven other YouTubers, so I have also got... Uh, Poland and Japan to cover after this video. You guys will see that, I believe, on the 31st and the 12th. So stay tuned for those videos because that's going to be pretty awesome. Um, and I don't know what I'm going to do for those videos. Leave, leave me suggestions down below what you want me to do. A lot of people wanted to see me use the full team rather than just one standout player. Obviously, I used James Rodriguez for Colombia last time, but I'm using a full Senegalese team this time. So it's a pretty good team. Down in the description down below, you can find the One Football app link and also a link to the playlist, which me and the seven other YouTubers are doing we're all making a, a full guide to the world cup it's pretty cool and the best way to stay up to date with it is by subscribing to the playlist or just downloading one football both links are in the description and of course in the next video it's going to be dr benji's video go and check him out he is a great youtuber i'll leave a link to every single youtuber that's com uh, like, not competing but um what's the word like taking part essentially in this i'll leave a link to everyone in the description so i thought without further ado we would actually have a look at the full Senegalese team now in goal we have got alfred gomez this is the highest rated goalkeeper senegal have which is unfortunate because obviously in fifa having a silver goalie is a big disadvantage but him being six four with the traditional save technique wasn't horrendous he wasn't too bad at all uh, i was expecting a lot worse but alfred gomez actually wasn't the worst in the team by a country mile he made some decent saves and i was pretty impressed with him uh if we go over unfortunately i've gone to the wrong side if we go over to the right back spot we have got um yusuf sabali now if i actually mess up any of these names i do apologize uh we've got sabali here though he's five for eight with half decent stats he's the highest rated right back in the senegalese national team on fifa that is um he's 700 coins and he wasn't too bad uh, a lot of these players have not the world's best stats but actually weren't too bad to compete in the teams i was coming up against in the dkt were god squads like literally god squads and i completely understand because my main team is a god squad as well i understand why people are using god squads but it was very difficult to compete with a, a lower rated team like this however these players did compete so the next one is actually a uh, kalidu kulabali now i was going to wait and do this at the weekend when the calcio a tots came out and use a team of the season card however i thought i might as well use his 84 rated card and give you an accurate representation of how he plays he was decent six foot five with high high work rates 85 uh, defending an 86 physical is just phenomenal he's a great player in game i really do enjoy using him and the next one is my untradeable first owner Salif Sane I got this guy in the Bundesliga upgrade and this guy is a tank he's a great great defender if we look at some of his stats he's got 96 in-game strength he's got 92 defending and 91 physical 99 heading accuracy 94 slide uh, stand tackle sorry 86 slide tackle um but he's also got 84 in-game dribbling 85 ball control 75 agility 95 reactions 93 in-game composure 95 shot power 66 long shots with 92 short passing 85 long passing this guy has actually got a really really good card and i was thoroughly thoroughly impressed with this card he was a decent card to use and i was really happy with how he played at the left back spot though we have got bukari drame who's a silver guy he's got 80 pace he's one of the, i don't think he's the highest rated or he's joint highest rated maybe but uh he was one of the fastest so i decided to use him i could have used someone like um 
I forget the guy's name from Crystal Palace, but I could have used him. Um, although this guy was a lot faster, so I thought I'd use Drame instead. And I was ple pleasantly surprised. He wasn't bad at all. I did enjoy using this card. I thought he was decent. Uh, five foot eleven with uh, being left footed is decent. Unfortunately, his passing let him down a little bit. But apart from that, he wasn't too bad. And competing with some of the team of the season players that were playing on the left wing against him actually didn't perform too badly. Now at CDM, I've gone with another centre back. It's actually Sheku Kiyate. I think that's how you say his name. I'll shake Kiyate. Um, 83 pace, 8 defending, 90 physical and 70 dribbling I thought was a great card. His passing let him down a little bit, but for 17,500 coins, not bad at all. Um... He actually played, I believe, on six chemistry. Uh, if I make, yeah, six chemistry. So uh, unfortunately, playing on six chemistry did let him down ever so slightly. But I used to move him down, bring Kudabali off, and make some changes, which I'll show you guys in just a second. And truthfully, wasn't too bad. He didn't let me down at all. I thought he was a great, great defender, and he's got some incredible stats for a defensive midfielder. I put a shadow on him as well, which made him that ever so slightly faster, and I enjoyed him a lot. The right centre mid is Adrissa Garner Gay, who I was very, very happy with. He is almost like Kante in the sense that he's quite small, fast and great at defending and physical. Um, he was bodying people. He's got great passing. His shooting felt surprisingly decent as well. And overall was just the, the person holding the midfield together most definitely. He was absolutely phenomenal. Now on the left centre mid spot we've got Mohamed Diame, the guy that scored the absolute banger long shot for I believe Hull to get them into the Premier League. Absolute decent player actually. Very very impressed with him. He's got very good all well around his stats and probably should be a gold but unfortunately is silver. Um um, nevertheless, I thought that was a decent card with 73 long shots, 85 shot power. He just kind of held down the midfield quite a little bit. He wasn't the strongest, which is kind of a letdown, but uh, overall wasn't horrendous at all. I was quite impressed with the way he played. Now, the cam is someone that I was very, very happy with. It's actually Sadio Mane. He didn't get a lot of goals or assists, but he was a very good player, very solid, and one of the best players in the team. He's, uh, as I was about to say, defending. His dribbling and his pace was next to none, and his shooting felt really decent as well. Unfortunately, I was going to get his team of the season card and play in a three uh, up top formation. However, there isn't any good right wingers or right mids from Senegal. So I thought I'd play a narrow formation and get his foot birthday card at Cam. And I was pleasantly surprised by his card. It was a very, very good card to use. Now, we're going on to Juve. Juve got a lot of assists. And now I'm going to go into the next striker in a second. Juve got a lot of assists. Hasn't got the greatest of dribbling, but he's just got pace and physical and he just runs straight through, which I was very happy with. Uh, he did the job that I wanted him to do. And he just I just wanted him to run straight through and uh, and play one twos with the other striker, who is Musa Sao, who is very pleasantly, surprisingly good. He was actually really, really good. He's got 84 pace, 77 dribbling, 76 shooting. But he was very decent. I enjoyed using this card a lot. This card was very decent. But this is the full team. Now, on the bench, we have got Ndiaye. We have got Saviet as well, or Save. Uh, I think I just messed that name up completely. This is the guy I talked about, by the way, Suare. That's the other left back I could have gone with. Uh, and we also have Baure Diao. Now, usually the subs I'd make were Baure Diao, is striker. I bring on this Ndiaye card here. And I bring on Save for Che Kiate. Um, and I'd switch those around. Or I'd, I'd put uh, Kiate at CB. They're the kind of changes that I would make, although I didn't make any of those changes uh, at the start of the 11. It's just the changes I made in-game for this team. So um, they're, the, they're the kind of changes that I'd make. But hopefully this video uh, was good for you to go, uh, for you guys to watch. I'm going to post com over the gameplay now so you guys can get an idea of how the team how the team played, how the games went. Hopefully you guys did enjoy. Make sure to check out One Football, and I'll see you guys in the post commentary. I haven't done something like this in quite a while. I'm going to be post-comming the games that I played. This was the first team I came up against. Now, with a full Senegal team, this is extremely daunting. What a team this guy has. Honestly, it's such a nice-looking team. And it was very daunting. Now, he was trying to abuse Sterling as much as possible down that wing. That Sterling card is so fast, great at dribbling. Very scary to play against. But on the counter-attack straight away, we uh, we found some space with uh, with Musa Sao, who dinked to Stegen like it was nothing. It was I was in shock. Honestly, I was not expecting that at all. I was genuinely in shock. Um, I was expecting it to either hit the post or just go narrowly wide. I was not expecting it to go in, especially from, uh, I believe he's 78 rated with like 77 in-game finishing. It was just, uh, it was definitely a shock for that to actually, uh, for that to loop in. So, um, Fast forward about 20 minutes in game. Uh, we get another account attack. Now, this game, although I played on the front foot, I'm not going to lie, I actually did play this game on the front foot. Um, my best chances were definitely from counter attacks because this guy pushed everything forward when he attacked and he just didn't really have much of a defense. Uh, so that was another counter attack. And Musa Sal with another amazing finish. And I think his first name is Musa. I hope his first name is Musa. Otherwise, I look like an absolute idiot. Uh, with an amazing first time, not first time, but uh, with, with amazing uh, low driven finish. 
straight past to Stegen. Absolutely beautiful. Uh, and we go again. We won the ball from midfield against this guy, which was a shock to me because I didn't think I'd win too much from midfield. And I was surprised that this didn't go in, honestly. I would have thought that that I had way more of a chance of going into the other goals that we actually scored. Winning again in midfield. Uh, the midfield for this team was really, really strong. To Stegen having an absolute mare. Not quite as bad as Carriers last night, but we won't talk about that. Um... You know, I was really surprised with the midfield of this team. It was it was surprisingly really good. One thing I've noticed a lot with uh, with the Senegalese players is that they're, they're quite tall, they're fast, and they're strong. That is a great combination to have, especially in midfield. Uh, I was dispossessing Kante and Rooney with absolute ease. Um, and we move on into the 70th minute here where we have another chance, which, again, not entirely sure how this gets kept out. I, I'm, I'm in shock again how, uh, how Baure Diaw did not score this. Uh, he then runs down the wing with Sterling. This is pretty much all he had to his game. He barely had anything to his game but running down the wing. And unfortunately, Gomis being a silver goalkeeper could not keep that out, which was a it was a bit of a disappointment, not going to lie. Obviously, I didn't expect him to keep it in, uh, keep it out, sorry, because he's a silver goalie. And then we then go and concede this from Harry Kane, to which I'm thinking there's no way I'm going to throw this lead away. A 3-0 lead away, I'm not throwing this away. Um, what a header by Harry Kane. There's just no way that um, that that my goalkeeper was going to keep that out. There was just no way. But in the end game, we actually won the game 3-2. Now, looking at the stats, I dominated this game. I really did. Um, honestly, I feel like the only reason he kept pos uh, possession in this entire game was because his players were so much better than my players. However, it wasn't a very, it wasn't a great performance by this guy. And this is the second team that we face up against. What is this team? Why am I coming up against God's Gods with a half silver team? Ridiculous. This team is absolutely phenomenal. He's got the Liverpool trio up front and a Bundesliga midfield and defence. A very nice team indeed. Uh, and moving straight in, we're on the front foot straight away. We played so dominantly. How Farming kept that out, I have no idea. To this day, I still don't understand how he saved that. It was absolutely phenomenal save. Nine minutes in now, we get our second chance. What a... F uh, honestly, I just saw the space Mane was running into. And what a pass. What a goal. Absolutely phenomenal. Great goal by Mane. Great finish. Great, great pass. That space just opened up straight in front of me. And I was like, oh, there is no way I'm not scoring with this. Back heel pass straight in through. This guy wasn't the best of players. I'm not going to lie to you. He really wasn't a very good player at all. And we capitalized on his mistake of giving me the space. He then passes a couple of balls through. And unfortunately, my, I don't know, my CDM just didn't track anything. He just did not do anything. He didn't track anything. And there was a really cheesy goal that this guy scored. Did not deserve it. It was against the runner play. It was against everything that was going on in this game. It really just came out of nothing for this guy. We move on straight away and we get another chance here with Duve. Unfortunately, it's saved by Farman, who had the game of his life in this game, apparently. Um... We get one more uh, chance here just before half time with Mane, who uh, I, I thought I played this well. I uh, barely spinned in, but unfortunately, Farman again kept that out. And sorry, this is the last chance before half time. This chance here. How Farman keeps this out, I have no idea. I'm in shock. How he kept this out. I should have been winning 4 1 by now with absolute ease. This guy literally relied completely on Farman with a god squad against my full Senegalese team. And at half time, I had nine shots, five on target to his two with two on target. And it's 1-0. So I was like, you know what? Need to make some changes. Chief came straight off because he just wasn't scoring. So I had to bring him off. Uh, I decided to bring off Diame for Ndai as well. Kuyate, I thought it was best to bring him off. So I put uh, just a Ghana gay at CDM. And I brought on Saivet or Savier at centre mid. So we've got a full goal midfield now and a full goal attack. Thought maybe this would help the game. Um, in the 80th minute, the, the, I, I had a few more chances. I just didn't want to include him. I thought it would get boring. In the 80th minute, he does this. Unfortunately... He just wouldn't switch me to a Drissagana game time and he scores this goal. Um, it sucks, but unfortunately that, that's how it went and this game ended 2-1. I got knocked out in the second round by this pleb who he wasn't a good player at all. He just passed it around the back and held possession for the rest of the game. I almost got the ball a couple of times, but the Senegalese players just weren't good enough to compete with this team, unfortunately. Um, and he just he managed to just pass the ball around and switch the ball uh, from left to right and just pass the ball around all game. This is literally all he did. He just kept it down the corner against a full Senegalese team. This is how he closed out a victory. It sucks, but that's how it is. I want to thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure you check out one football link in the description. Make sure you check out Dr. Benji, whose video is up next, and everyone else. There is a link to all the channels in the description. Make sure you subscribe to the YouTube playlist to get up to date with every single one football video of this campaign and to keep up to date with the World Cup. Thank you for watching this video. Subscribe if you're new around here, and I'll see you later.
numbers.